We have a podcast. Diving, diving deep. deep. Diving deep into all things Texas. Both on and off the field. Here's Sean Pendergast. And Pro Football Hall of Famer, the General. Sean McClain. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Utopia. Rapid fire, some for real with the here. Absolutely. All right, we dig into some of the Texans and other storylines around the uh, around the league. Uh and other things, maybe not just football, in a segment we call For Real or Fugazi. I read a sentence to John. If John agrees with it, if he thinks I'm on target with it, he says, for real. If I read the sentence to him and he thinks I'm off base, I'm crazy, I'm nuts, it's false, he says, Fugazi. Fugazi. That's Italian for counterfeit or fake. As, if, as in, Sean, your sentence there is fake and false and phony. Get off of my TV. All right. Um, John? Uh, Expectations for the Texans coming into the season were for about a five or six win team. You picked them to be six and eleven. I picked them to be seven and ten. We recalibrate expectations, possibly for real or Fugazi. The Texans are a nine win football team. Fugazi. I'm not going to have them jump up from wow. three and nine. You might, but if they, I could put them up around eight. And of course, the injuries will tell the tale. But when you look at their schedule, most of the games are winnable. Two games that we had them down for losses from the get-go, the Bengals are one and three. Now they're probably going to bounce back, but the Jets are not going to bounce back mm-hmm. from the loss of Aaron Rodgers. And I don't care how well Zach Wilson plays at that time of the year, they're still not going to be as dangerous. And they may have already played the best team they're going to play this season. That's the Ravens who are leading the AFC North. John, I – um. Seth and I kind of did a peek ahead at the schedule for the rest of the year today, just to, you know, very, very surface level, not, not a deep dive. The biggest question mark, I think, if, it's, if this is who the Texans are and C.J. Stroud stays healthy and we know they're going to win some and lose some, I think the biggest swing for the Texans is going to be the question, what are the Titans doing late in the season? Like, what are the Titans? Because they play them both games against the Titans are in December, week 15 and week 17. The window for the Titans is anywhere from competing for the division to, hey, let's see what we have in Malik Willis or Will Levis. Like if they're in that mode at the end of the year, that's probably two wins for the Texans. If they're not in that mode, then it's going to be two dogfights for the Texans. I think that's the biggest swing to me for the Texans for the balance of the season is those two Titan games, the Columbia blue oiler uniform game and then the New Year's Eve game at NRG Stadium. What the Titans have is the best defense in the in the division. And about one of the best run defenses in the NFL, but their offense is so sporadic. It's a roller coaster, and it all depends on it on Henry and 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 Tannehill. Because if Derrick Henry's not rushing for over a hundred yards, Tannehill's not effective. So I'm guessing you know Henry faces eight man fronts all the time. Yeah, but he has been up and down this season too. He's coming off his best game. Tannehill is off to a terrible start, but when teams have to worry about him. He can throw five passes like he did Sunday to DeAndre Hopkins. But there's not a great team. I still think if a team has the best chance to win, it'd be the Jaguars. They came off that great game against Atlanta and London. Now, after, look, Texans embarrassed them. Now, uh, the Texans have to do the same thing to the Falcons. But as we've been saying, uh, AFC South, if the Texans win this game, I'm going to be thinking, Why not the Texans? Yeah, absolutely. I'm already thinking that way, John. Absolutely. Um, All right, John, next one. Hey, Denzel Perryman is back from his broken hand or wrist or whatever it was, but Christian Harris and Henry Toa Toa have been just fine, for real or Fugazi. Just leave Harris and Toa Toa out there. Uh, I think that's for real. I would leave Harris, Toa Toa, and get Blake Cashman in whenever I could when you're playing three linebackers and tell Denzel Perryman, I know you're the leading tackler, but you got a club on one end, just relax till you're hundred percent and that comes off. We're doing fine. Now in, in it's maybe some running situations when they need a physical linebacker to shoot that gap. Maybe they put him in on third and one or fourth and one obvious running plays, but overall toe toes on the going to get bigger. Yeah. All right. Let's keep it moving here. Uh, the, the, uh, the Carolina Panthers, John are supposedly rumored to be looking for help for Bryce Young, who has been uh, abjectly terrible through the first three starts, four games of his career. The Panthers are 0-4, and and they're supposedly chasing, trying to chase big-time wide receiver help. For real or for Gazy, this is exactly what the Panthers should do. Go get Bryce Young some weapons. 
cost be damned. Oh boy. Um, Ooh, I'm going to say Fugazi. That's the right answer. They don't have their number one pick. Yep. And so what do they have to offer? They can't offer their number one pick in 2025. T. Higgins is hurt. That's the guy that they supposedly are talking about because he's going to have to have a big contract. Yep. But I think you go ahead. and They added a bunch of veterans. They made a lot of changes on the roster. They bring in all veteran coaches for Frank Reich, veteran play caller. And so I don't think it's the end of the world for them right now. You know, they're going to have to wait till longer, but I don't see them doing that and sacrificing number one pick in two years or their second round pick this year since they already gave up the one. Yeah. they. I mean, they've emptied the chamber to get Bryce Young. I, I don't think like, it's so now you got to empty even more of the chamber to go get help for him because he needs help. CJ Stroud didn't need any help, John. I'm just saying, you know, you didn't need any help. Great quarterbacks um, make great receivers. You got that right. All right, next one. Um, Aaron Rodgers has said in, to multiple outlets that he plans on coming back sometime this season, John. He's attacking rehab five hours a day to try to get back this season. For real or Fugazi, Aaron Rodgers will be back playing sometime in the 2023 season. Fugazi. <laughs> if he does, it's because he's been immunized. And no telling what he's going to get immunized with. If they're playing well enough to make the playoffs, that means Zach Wilson has improved right. dramatically. So why would you want to all of a sudden pull him out and put in Rodgers, who's missed all that time with a after he had a surgery to repair Achilles tendon? So no, I think that sounds good. People get fired up, but what's the point at his age to try to rush him back instead of waiting till next season? You think he plays again, though, right, John? Not this year. Oh, yeah, you think he yeah. Plays he's, next year? He's, yeah. He's already said he'll be back, and he makes so much money. He doesn't want to go out with an injury like this. And no. uh, He's single. He doesn't have kids. You know, what does he have? I don't even know if he plays golf other than making a lot of media appearances he, with Pat McAfee. I don't know what he does on the he side. He sits in the woods and eats mushrooms all day. That's he what goes he does. In, he goes in the darkness. Right. That's it, man. All right, two more, John. Um, the NFL – actually had to put out a statement, or at least they felt the need to put out a statement to explain their strategy on social media of leaning into the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey phenomenon. They changed their bio for the league. They changed the avatars on the various social media accounts. They changed them back eventually, like they always do. But it got a lot of people angry, maybe even favoritism towards the Chiefs, John. For real or Fugazi, the NFL, they were right to put out a statement explaining why they're leaning into the T-Swift phenomenon. Sure, why not? I like it. I'd rather watch Taylor Swift and and Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and Mrs. Kelsey in the suite than the Giants, the Bears, the Broncos, those teams that are boring. And the fact is, it's the same reason they do things on Nickelodeon. They're trying to reach young fans. And everybody thinks Taylor Swift's only fans are young girls. No, there's a lot of young guys that like her too. There's yeah. a lot of old guys like me that like her. Oh, so I, I think you. anything they can do to try to grow their audience with a younger crowd is good. And I'm kind of fascinated by the whole thing. I doubt seriously they're going to get married and live happily ever after. I doubt it Milk too. Milk it while you can. I doubt it too. But do you think the NFL had to put out a statement, John? That was my for real of Rugazi, that the NFL was right to put out a statement explaining themselves to people on social media. I think they did it for the old farts like us that were complaining okay. about it all the time. And I think that statement yeah. got got picked up by every media outlet. Just yeah. another example of the NFL being so far ahead of everybody else when it comes to PR. Okay, so that's not a Fugazi. That is a... For real. For real. Okay, last one, John. For real or Fugazi? Astros in four. Fugazi, I think it's going to go five. I think it'll go. The pitching is so good. Uh, the hitting is good, but the pitching is great. Both bullpens are great. I think it'll be low scoring, and I think it'll go five. Oh, man. Can you imagine a game five in the ALDS? That's a fun, <laughs> that's a fun night of watching some baseball right there. Yeah, while you're watching on your big screen TV setup, I'll be in a suite. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's, uh, John, flex while you can, buddy. Of course. I got a gravy train off you. I need to, I need to get, I need to find my way into that center field suite sometime, John. I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get on the John McClain gravy train at some point. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, if it comes to that, uh, we'll get tickets and you and Amy can join us. Okay. All right. Well, that's giddy up, John. No pressure. Um, 
Uh, John, what do you got going on on the website? I know you got to get to Texas. We got to right? pick her. We got to pick the score, right? Oh yeah, well, yeah, pre- yeah. Oh my God, yes. Thank you, John. Game prediction on the score between the Texans and the Falcons. Yes, yes. We should have done that back at the six pack. Go ahead. I'm picking the Texans to win this game, 23-20. 23-20. I got Texans 27, Falcons 17. Wow. So Two the, points. Yeah. Three double figures in a row. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.